Uh, welcome back. And this for the home run, uh, we are going to talk about the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Second wave, if you've been following the international news wires, you probably have been saying that uh, the cases continue to rise in Europe and America, and some of those cities are now threatening uh, shutdown, or at least some, some form of restriction. Nigeria, well, looks like business as usual. We're not taking things seriously as usual. The government is warning. The numbers continue to rise also in the country. But uh, 65,000 65, um, infections so far in the country, 61,000 of those have recovered, just a little over 1,000 uh, have died. So our number is not as much as what you have globally, 38 million have um, uh, recovered from the virus, 15 million are still active, uh, over a million deaths worldwide. So you see the numbers and you look at how Nigeria pales, you can understand sometimes um, the behavior to think that uh, the COVID-19 is no longer in the country, but far, far, far from the truth. We have a fine array of resource persons this morning to talk with us on um, preventing a second wave of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Outside the shores of this country, we have Ifain Osai. Ifain Osai is a medical practitioner and chief executive officer of uh, Creep MD. He joins us from California, the United States. Great to have you join us. Um, also joining us in Abuja, or rather Port Harcourt, is uh, Dr. Eli Sukarime. Eli Sukarime is a um, consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist, a medical practitioner. Thank you for joining us on News Hub as we talk about preventing a uh, second wave of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, I think we, are, we also have another guest in Abuja. I will let you into that one shortly. But let's watch this report done by uh, 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 correspondent Mudupe. Uh, when you watch this, we come back and we can talk some more. Millions of Nigerians believe the worst moment of the coronavirus pandemic is over, with the Nigerian economy opening up. Quite a number of people doubt the deadly virus still exists as hands are no longer being washed, wearing of nose masks are becoming scarce in the open and physical distancing gradually closing in. While many live in this belief, the second wave of the virus has commenced in many parts of Europe. Health experts say a second wave of any pandemic is more destructive. But the attitude of many Nigerians towards the pandemic says otherwise. Our findings show two in ten persons wear news masks, a relapse from the first wave of the virus. I started this journey from my two area down to here. You see that less than one percent of the people are using face masks. Even me, I had to bring down my own because we are now the few that had it are like fish out of water. You enter the buses now, nobody is wearing those masks. Enter the market. When you ask people, they will tell you Corona, there is nothing like Corona. They even say that they have used it in Sanfunu, Nigeria money. I don't use those masks. Actually, majority of Nigeria, yeah, they don't believe that there's coronavirus. Do you believe there is coronavirus? I don't believe. Okay, why? Eh? Why don't you the reason, the reason why is that I'm always in the midst of people. Maybe 10, 15 people, and there's nothing like that, yes. Are you fine? Yes, there's nothing. When we have this pandemic, when we have it all around, the case in Nigeria is not as severe as other countries. So by now, people, they are easy with the lockdown, and people are like, since we didn't experience it, it wasn't as fatal as the way it was in other countries when it was much. So presently, people were like, maybe there is no even pandemic and uh, they are not even expecting the second wave. Meanwhile, Nigeria's new COVID-19 infections have increased in the past two weeks, suggesting a possible resurgence of cases. NCDC still cautions, but could government's decision of opening up the economy may be responsible for the relapse in people's safety consciousness. So I think there was a lot of uh, pressure on government to open up so that people can at least have some respite, some financial respite, even government itself, so that government itself can have some financial respite. But that does not uh, mean that we should throw our guards away. But in Lagos, the epicenter of the virus, for instance, testing capacity is low, 
a likelihood that more cases might be detected if testing capacity is high. Though many people are not testing, I operate a test center and uh, people don't show up uh, to test as much as they used to when uh, uh, they, 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 they were in the peak uh, of COVID-19. They haven't had anybody today turn up to come on and it's a free center. Staying ahead of a pandemic may go a long way. The policy makers must listen to the experts. Once you listen to the experts, they will guide you right. Uh, a situation where some states say they don't have COVID and they were celebrating COVID free. You know, epidemiologically, that is not true. There are too many states that are not, that are not even testing at all uh, right now. So uh, you may want to blame government for that because uh, everybody should be testing. Utah season is here and visitations may be high. It calls for everyone to heighten their guard, whether there is enforcement from the government or not. The virus stays real and infectious until a vaccine is approved. Modupo Lua, Shore Mekun, Silverbird News 24, Lagos. All right, brilliant reporting there by uh, Modupe. Let's um, hook up now with our guest and um, Great, we have one outside the country, another one inside the country to give us um, their perspectives on what is happening. I don't know whether I'll start from where the bad news is, which is the, actually the United States. <laughs> I'll start with you, um, Dr. Ifain Osai. I'm sure you saw the report by <coughs> Modupe there, and you're probably comparing notes with your uh, Nigerian colleagues here and wondering if there are lessons to be learned uh, from either side of the divide. But, but tell us, second wave of the United States already on. I've seen a number of reports across international news outlets and wondering what we can learn from this side. Dr. Osai. Um, yeah, so um, the second wave is way on the way, uh, way on the way in the United States. Uh, in California, uh, where I am presently, uh, we recently surpassed a million cases, uh, which is uh, honestly quite disturbing. Um, so I, I do think the second wave in the United States is in, uh, it's inevitable. Uh, but that does not have to be the case in Nigeria. Uh, I, I believe if Nigerians do not pay attention to it, that will certainly be the case. Uh, but it's something we can prevent. It's not inevitable. The, the virus, uh, you know, it doesn't control our life. We are humans. We are the captains of our own fate. Uh, we determine uh, our own situation. So if, you know, we test more, if we do contact tracing, if we isolate, if we use, if we wash our hands, uh, you know, and if we, uh, uh, you know, uh, use hand sanitizers and, you know, practice social distancing. It should not be the case in Nigeria, but if we ignore it, uh, as we see that many Nigerians are, then yes, it's uh, something that will happen. There could be some kind of uh, uh, restrictions, so to speak, although uh, President-elect Joe Biden uh, first state announced his team, uh, the, the task force on COVID-19, and uh, even as we await the uh, so many things surrounding the election which should bring in the new administration or whatever the United States people decide. Um, the world's eyes are on the United States on how it handles the COVID-19 pandemic. As said uh, on Monday, your state as well, California, Michigan, Washington, uh, the latest of the three U.S. states to have uh, brought about strict measures. Uh, right now we hear that 11 million people in the United States have been confirmed to have contracted COVID-19. Do you think what is on ground at this point in time is able to contain this pandemic as the weather gets colder? Um, so, uh, unfortunately not, uh, because the current administration, uh, you know, uh, the Trump administration's policy have been policy of denial. And I feel like that has, you know, spewed over uh, to other countries uh, like Nigeria, and that I, you know, encourage people to, you know, not wear masks and things like that. So I, I, I do think the transition, uh, the delay in transition to the Biden administration uh, will potentially cost, uh, you know, uh, thousands of life in the United States. Uh, we are uh, in by no way, you know, uh, ready to deal with the, the pandemic here in the United States because uh, the administration is still in denial and uh, they are not making enough effort to transfer to the uh, to transfer power to the Biden uh, administration, uh, which you know will be much better and uh, you know will help folks you know fight this virus. Got uh, Dr. Eli uh, Sukarime uh, joins us. I I'm sure, Dr. Sukarime, you probably we have to wait for hell to freeze over 
uh, for us to get the conspiracy theories out of the way. But it's what it is in this part of the world, especially when it comes to whether we believe or not uh, the coronavirus is there. But, but tell me something. You, you know, you look at the numbers um, for Nigeria, will be one in, one in 60 people who picked up the virus has died, close to what you've got globally also, to one in, one, in, one in a little over 50 for Nigeria, then globally one in maybe 60 have died. But a recovery rate way higher. We have 61,000 out of 66,000 who picked up the virus have recovered in this country compared to what you get outside uh, the shores of the country. What, what do you think? Do, do these numbers tell the real picture of what we are facing with the coronavirus to fear that a second wave uh, could be possible here? Uh, there are a lot of things to consider when we look at the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, looking at it critically, Uh, Dr. Sukari, if you can help us take off the, the nose mask, I, I think we'll, we'll, you're, you're in a secure place, I can imagine. Uh, it's just you in that room. Hey, Doc, can you help us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we will still try to speak uh, with Dr. Eli Sukari in just a moment. We are connection with you a little bit um, you know, challenging there. We have to fix that and get back to you. So let's speak uh, again with uh, Dr. Ifai. Um, you, you, you see what's going on in the country. What's your view of government handling of COVID-19 in the country vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the citizens' reaction or attitude towards all the uh, protocols being advised by health officials, especially the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19? Um, so, uh, how it's been handled in the United States or in Nigeria? In Nigeria. You Nigerian. You're Nigerian-American, I want to believe, right. but right. you're Nigerian. So, um, <laughs> I believe uh, the, uh, the president has uh, handled the situation, uh, you know, uh, in a style manner. Uh, I commend the, uh, you know, uh, the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, as a true patriot uh, for what they have done for the people. Uh, uh, you know, you, you can only say so much um, and people have to, you know, take distance upon themselves. The government is not going to come force you and do something at your house, right? So we are a democracy. So uh, that's not the kind of government we are. So I believe the government of uh, Mr. Buhari have done, you know, a lot. Uh, we, they could do more uh, to, you know, help raise awareness. Uh, the Ministry of Health can definitely do more to help encourage the use of uh, telemedicine and uh, tools like that, like uh, CribMD. You know, instead of, you know, uh, traveling about, we can actually bring doctor to your home and, uh, you know, deliver health care to you at home instead of having you go to the hospital and get an infected or possibly in, uh, infected other people. So uh, I do think uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I think the government needs to work with the companies like uh, CribMD, you know, to help, you know, fight this virus and, you know, help make sure that a second wave does not happen in Nigeria. Dr. Osai, I'm sure together with the United States, even in Africa here, um, we, we're probably bringing a general sense of um, optimism with the announcement of vaccines. But we'll come talk about the vaccines after this break. Uh, we'll join uh, Dr. Osai as well as Dr. Eli Sukarime right after this. Please stay with us. Uh, welcome back. Uh, preventing the second wave, wave of COVID-19 is a prayer generally we're all talk, uh, uh, praying about and I uh, hope that uh, some of those, in, those things we see in the United States and um, some parts of Europe don't replicate 
uh, over here in Nigeria. Dr. Eli Sukarime is in Port Harcourt as well as Dr. If uh, as well as Ifa Osai, who is in the United States in California, and both of them joining us virtually for discussions on COVID-19 preventing a second wave in uh, Nigeria. Right. So, um, Ifa Osai, if, if you if you look at um, the discussions we're having around um, um, the vaccines, uh, Pfizer, there's another one again, all of them over 90% uh, efficacy we've seen. And there's a general agreement across board, whether in, uh, across the continents, that the vaccine is the pathway out of this COVID-19 for us to get back to life as normal. And I'm sure you've been following the discussions and conversations about what to do with the vaccines, especially for uh, on this side of, of the border where people are worried that um, we may get the short end of the stick and I've had and seen a number of uh, discussions and agreements that this uh, could work out. I see that Dr. Uh, Eli Sukarime is back with us and um, it will be good if I can get your thoughts on the vaccine um, rollout from the Nigerian perspective. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts? And there has been a report that in the perspective, the uh, well, we, we, we are not yet um, able to get hold of that vaccine, but as Nigerians and healthcare providers, I think we can not just rely on, on, on the vaccine for now because of so, a lot of factors. Uh, the way forward for Nigerians with respect to prevention of coronavirus, we have to put into place the uh, uh, recommended protocols as simple as wearing of face masks. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in Nigeria here, there are a lot of factors that play out as a consultant of obstetrician and gynecologist. Uh, I've observed that uh, some of my patients do not even believe in the theory of coronavirus. And it's a very big deal trying to create a lot of awareness that coronavirus is real. And if you look at the statistics of Nigeria, we have recorded about 65,000 cases of coronavirus with over 60,000 that have recovered and uh, about 1,000 or so dead from coronavirus. So, so we have to take it one step at a time we are battling with a lot of challenges in Nigeria, which I normally term to be triplets. You have the issue of illiteracy, poverty, and ignorance. So we have to, first of all, sensitize those in our locality that they have to observe protocols with respect also to speak with you more since you really are in touch with patients every day and I'd like for you to share more light. You said you've mentioned ignorance, illiteracy and a lot of other factors militating against people really understanding and believing uh, on the fact that coronavirus is in the country. But between you and I, nobody would say that the media, the government, in fact, <laughs> the global space is totally in tune with the fact that COVID-19 is real. There are confirmed cases, you know, some treated and discharged. Some people had died from this uh, COVID-19. Some people are suffering, as we speak, from the complications that have arisen from this uh, COVID-19. Which other way, doctor, can we drive home this message to our people in the country? that the use of face masks, no masks, whichever one you want to use, uh, washing your hands frequently, uh, sanitizing your hands where you don't have access to water and soap to wash, washing of hands. How else can we drive home this message? Because it's, been, it's just the same old story. How do we drive home this, this message to our people so that they can guard against the possible uh, our second wave of COVID-19 in the country? I, it's quite it's quite unfortunate because there are a lot of social and cultural factors militating against the implementation and conviction of populace, especially in the hinterlands of Nigeria, in the prevention of coronavirus. 
we all know that we have challenges with power supply. Not many people are able to even listen to what we have been discussed right now. We have to make use of the other media, med other electronic media like the radio and also the internet, which may not even be available in some of those hinterlands in Nigeria. So we have to, we have to move into those areas. We have problems with transportation. We have problems with roads and network. So we have to convince them. And you know, in Nigeria, we have different languages. Not everyone understands English language. All right, sorry about that uh, connection. One of those days, um, Dr. Uh, Eli Sukarime. We still have um, Ifai Osai with us. Uh, Ifai Osai joins us from California in the United States. And I I'm sure Ifai, you're probably listening and you're thinking also too about many of the things um, uh, Dr. Sukarime is talking about. Um, thankfully, people will say those in sub Saharan Africa, including Nigeria, may have dodged a bullet when you look at those numbers and compared to what you got in Europe and in America. And they say, for example, that um, if, you, if you look at how it's played out for, especially for many of, many of us over here, many things, we, many things you look at here, you look at the, vi the coronavirus and say the simple things like washing your, washing your hands regularly, wearing a face or nose mask, uh, maintaining social distance. These are, these are things that don't require money or resources. But something he mentioned, especially with the vaccine, you look at those temperatures where you would have to store uh, the doses. You're looking at perhaps uh, minus 75, I saw in one instance, one minus, 20, minus 25 degrees centigrade. And this is a country where regular power supply remains a major challenge in the urban and rural areas. Well, what are your thoughts? Um, so I, I do think uh, being able to effectively distribute the vaccine once it's once that's been developed uh, will be a, a major challenge in Nigeria. So I do think um, the federal government uh, is working on, you know, solutions uh, to store them, you know, in Abuja and Lagos and uh, in some major cities, uh, uh, you know, to keep them in refrigerated facilities. Uh, but it is a major problem, especially as you move away uh, from the major urban areas in Nigeria, how you are going to uh, effectively, uh, you know, vaccinate uh, the majority of the folks uh, living in the country. I, I do believe, um, yes, vaccine is important, and uh, you know, it's something we are all you know, hoping will happen. But realistically speaking, I don't think uh, this is something that is going to happen this year. This, it's not even something that might happen in Q1 2021. So we are uh, best case scenario. We are saying, okay, by this time next year, you know, uh, we will have a COVID vaccine that is effective and that you know. Uh, we can safely deploy. Uh, that is the best case scenario. So I think for many Nigerians, uh, the hope is not uh, to put all your faith in uh, a COVID vaccine. The, what we should really be doing is, you know, washing our hands, practicing social distancing, you know, um, following the government's recommendation and, you know, the Center for Disease Control's recommendation and, you know, uh, the recommendations of your physicians, uh, you know, avoiding unnecessary indoor gatherings, things like this. This is how we will beat Corona as a country. You know, it's something we can bet. We are Nigerians, we've, you know, persevered uh, through harder times and we will do it over and over again. And together we can overcome this thing, you know? Uh, so, I mean, we are the giants of Africa after all. So. Uh, we should not rely on vaccines. We should just, you know, practice safety measures for now and, uh, you know, help the uh, federal government solve this. I, so a lot of Nigerians, as we round off on this show uh, this morning, a lot of Nigerians in diaspora love to come home for a Christmas, for the Yuletide, if you ask me. Uh, the government is asking for some restrictions and some protocols to be observed uh, at this point in time. What are your thoughts with regards to the government of Nigeria's uh, position on those uh, people who want to come home? They're even advising that you can stay back for now, or if you're coming home, you have to obey all the rules being set up as we round off with you this morning, if I. Um, so I, I do think it's a quite a reasonable request. Uh, I don't see a reason why, uh, you know, the government should allow people, you know, away from the country to just freely import COVID into the country. Uh, that would be quite detrimental, you know, to the society. Uh, if they just let everybody have a free reign. So I think if you do absolutely need to travel, uh, if you have to, 
So uh, you should at least observe a 14 day quarantine. Uh, but ideally you should just, you know, leave uh, this year's Christmas celebration. Uh, many people in America are over, uh, you know, uh, you know, are passing over Thanksgiving this year. Many people are, you know, they're not going to be celebrating Christmas, uh, you know, en masse. So I think as, as uh, a species, we should all do the same. You know, we can, if we all work together, we can solve this. But if everybody starts, you know, coming home for Christmas, then, you know, stuff will get bad, you know, very fast. Then second wave is not a theory anymore. It will be, you know, a reality. So, uh, I mean, if you're listening to me and if you are a Nigerian trying to come home, I would say, you know, talk to your folks, let them know what the situation is and, you know, try to postpone it till last year sometime. Thank you very much, uh, Ifa and Osai. It's been great speaking with you from California in the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And Dr. Eli Sukarime, thank you very much. Uh, apologies for the disruption of the network, but um, we did uh, enjoy your conversation and engagement with us. Thank you very much, too. Okay, so right. that's the show uh, the way today. We rule. The way we do it. <laughs> Please wash your hands. Yeah. Take hand sanitizers with you. Very cheap. Now, a yeah. bottle of like 75 CL is just a thousand naira. You can get smaller bottles mm -hmm. and go around. Please spread the word and not the virus. Let's stay safe all the time yeah. and encourage others to do the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a healthy way to live. For many years, we've lived in an embarrassing way, in the way we talk, taking care of our hygiene and health. I mean, we had to be mandated to clean the environment. But now, can you imagine? Uh, people now have to wash their hands, have some, you know, think health now, in the way we do our things. And I think it's a oh. great way to go. Corona or no Corona. And that reminds me as we round off JJ's, you know, wash your hand with, wash your hand if you greet somebody, wash your hand if you greet your hand, wash your hand, and just wash your hands all the time. Yes, all the time. Have a beautiful day, I'm sure, we you did you. And, um, yeah, Never okay, mind. it's a happy I... birthday to <laughs> Sam Silola Dimeji, uh, your big uncle, Mr. Bankoli Akinremi, uh, saying a uh, happy birthday to you, his uh, beautiful, <laughs> handsome uh, nephew. So many happy returns of the evening. It's your birthday also today. We wish, wish you a very happy birthday. Yeah, Bankoli Patnelli, huh? <laughs> Patnelli. <laughs> Bamba. <laughs> All right, on behalf of everyone who's been.